Just look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, just say it like you mean it. Just don't say it, say it like you mean it. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There was other places that we could be, but it's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the service, Lord, that we're about to partake in. Father, I ask you, God, to come in, God. Lord, sit with us, Lord Jesus. Some have got a need for this and some have a need for that. But, Father God, we know that you'll supply all the needs to our riches and glory. Father, I ask you, God, to bless the speaker of the hour. Everything that you have poured into him, God, let it pour out, God. Father, God, I ask you to have your way in this service today. Oh, God, we stand in need of something from you. Oh, Father, God, supply that need today, God. Instruct us, Lord, and direct us on how we need to walk. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' precious name we do pray. Let the church say amen. 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 At this time, we'll have a selection. Everybody do what? Thank you. 
Amen. The praise team say, blessings and honor belong to him. Amen. David, without God, what could we be? What could we do? Because life is in him. And all good things come from him. Amen. Our health, our life, everything that's good comes from God. Amen. So we have to give him his glory. We have to give him his honor. Because he has gave so much to us. He sent his son to die for our lives that we would have a right to the tree of life. And for that, we said thank you. But we, most of all, it just says saying thank you. We honor him with the life that we live. We honor him by doing right. Not when everybody's around, but when you're by yourself. If you can still hold on to the hand of the mighty God that we serve. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. But that's when it's important. Not when we're in a setting like this, but when we're standing alone by ourselves. Amen. We serve a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. He is so worthy. Me, myself, I don't own enough that I can give to him. Only thing that I can give to him is my life. Because he gave me life. And if you give my life back to him, it's more than anything that I can do in this world. Amen. At this time, we all stand with him, recite the affirmation of faith. It should be on the screen. Okay. We're going to recite it in your list. We believe that God. first Sunday in July. The Free Will Baptist National Convention is scheduled for July 5th and 7th at Greenville Convention Center in Greenville. Pastor Clarida is scheduled to preach Wednesday morning, July 6th for the men's conference. Let us be in prayer and get excited for the upcoming convention. Mission session Saturday, July 16th at Solomon Original Free Will Baptist Church in Candle. 
Each of them is to provide one hand good and gently give us clothing for our community outreach on that day. That's it. At this time, we would have a tribute from Brother Lionel Shepherd. And after the tribute, we would have presentations by Brother Carvester Cole, Elder Johnny Rue, and Brother Damone Edwards. Called, 
he just calls a few good men. My brothers, I salute you. I salute you. I salute you. I love you because I was called to love you, but I love you also because I chose to love you. Amen. Smith Chapel, let's celebrate these few good men of God. Thank you. And remember, man, once God calls you out, you can't fit back in. How's everybody feeling? Great, great on this beautiful day. Uh, our tribute that was just given uh, about uh, what God wants is a few good men. I like to say that uh, that's what the Marines took from God. Didn't it? That's what the Marines said they wanted, a few good men. But anyway, thank God for the men here at Smith Chapel. Uh, all the visitors, men that are present, we'd like for you to please stand. All right, we, we, do, we, do have, we do have something for you. Also, we're going to take and give our presentation to our uh, home, homegrown men here at Smith Chapel. Homegrown. Young men, we need 
five more. Five more, we'll be complete. Ain't God good? This is what God is doing. I, I'm not doing it. I'm just putting it in position to present it to you guys. So I just thank God for being able to present.
has a very important part in our audiovisual ministry. He sets up the system that you see here, right? He gets us on live. He gets us on YouTube, right? Now this young man, now he know how to run the cameras now. I can't say that I'm gonna be the one up there doing it, right? But this young man, we just want to bless him on the day. Brother Deron, you are awesome, man. Come on up here. Y'all give him a hand. Now, Deron, inside of this program, now I know you got a sister and a grandma, but now I got you some gift cards. Y'all hear that? I got him. We got him some gift cards. Now, I want you to use them, right? Now, you might be able to give them a French fry every now and then, but don't let them eat up your stuff, sir. All right? Don't let them eat up your stuff. And we have another gift for you here. I put my eyeballs on for this one here. Yeah. Let's see. And it says Smith Chapel, original Free Will Baptist Church, Little Man of the Year, presented to Deron Grace. <laughs> and it is to Bishop Fred Clara Senior. Take care of it. All right.
Amen. Can we bless God this morning? Can we bless God for being so good and so faithful? Amen. We do honor the Spirit of the Lord. Bless God for everyone being here today, uh, to our speaker and to everyone that's here. I wanted to do something for our men. I told you on, I think, last Sunday, I had something for you. But Jenny present again. So what I want to do, I want to ask all the men of Smith Chapel, if you would um, line up over here to my right. All the men of Smith Chapel, just, just form a line from the podium going back to the wall. Just form a line. That's all you have to do. Form a line. All, all the men of Smith Chapel. And I, I do reserve the right not to give those men who are not here what I'm going to give these today. I didn't say I wouldn't, but I reserve the right not to give them what I'm going to give these men today. Men, we love you. We appreciate you. You are valued uh, as the men of this ministry. And we thank God for every, every man that makes up this ministry. We're blessed to have men in the house of God. Amen. And, and we pray and we believe that we not only have men, but we have godly men. Godly men in the house of God. Amen. So, um, Fred Jr. is going to come up here and he's going to stand right here. Fred Jr., come on, come on, sir. And this is something that I was so excited about doing. So excited about doing. But what I'm going to present to our men is a cap that says Smith Chapel Original for Little Baptist Church. Amen. We want to give these to our men to let them know that we appreciate them um, and you are valued. So when you wear this hat, I want you to remember that you belong to the king. Amen. So you can't act like you would act with your equal, you know, put the hat on. Amen. David said, bring me the ephod. So you put on the hat. And when you put on the hat, God will speak to you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Fred's going to pass out the hats to the brothers. You can start with those. And we are just, again, I'm, I'm so, I was so excited about being able to do this for our men. So me and y'all, y'all wear them with, with pride and let them know that you belong to the king. Amen. Now, I'm telling you this, they didn't, they didn't give me these, okay? And I didn't, I didn't steal them either. Okay, make sure we have it up for all the, all the men.
and said, you know, get a speaker. I was like, okay. And me, in fact, he was the first one that I called. He said, shoot. But I didn't really have anybody else after that, but I just felt in my spirit that you were going to say. I thank God that you did. You know, we talk a lot on the phone. We don't really see each other like we used to. But the love is still the same. I thank you for taking it. Attention. Right. Go ahead. And introduction to the speaker, Apostle Dr. Chris Cornegi graduated from Liberty University with a doctorate degree in ministry and a master's degree in divinity, theological studies. He received his master's degree in healthcare management from the University of Mount Olive. Dr. Cornegi also attended Bible Faith Global University where he obtained his doctorate in ministry, master's degree in divinity, master's degree in theology, and associate's degree in theology. In addition to many offices held in a local church, Dr. Cornegi has been mentored in the inner workings of the church and how to operate on an administrative level. Being in ministry for 20 years has helped him cultivate his passion for teaching and preaching God's word like no other. Dr. Cornegi, along with Prophetess Kita, currently serve as senior pastors of Greater Purpose International, which they co-founded in 2012. This is the first phase in Seeds of Purpose Ministries, which is designed to provide a platform for the emergence of the vision that has been placed in their hearts. Together they have accepted the mandate to empower people and help them fulfill their purpose in Christ. Apostle Chris shares his affinity for God's people and seeing them transform from the church to the kingdom. His model is based on 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, a new experience for God's new people. He is determined to carry the gospel throughout the world. Dr. Cornegi is passionate about the kingdom of God and continues his mission to help others pursue, pursue the things of God. He loves his family. Is, proud, is a proud father of four great grandchildren and has two grandchildren. At this time, we have another selection of youth choir, and after that selection, the next voice in the way of preaching will be the Apostle Chris Kennedy.
of scripture this morning. The book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Very familiar passage of scripture. Word of God reads, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Most precious and heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, O oh God, to stand before your people. Yeah. Father, for we do not take this lightly, but God asks, O oh Father, that as I decrease, you increase in me. Yeah. Father, let your Holy Spirit fill this place. Yeah. Let your Holy Spirit fill me, O oh God. Yeah. That as we do not speak the word, O oh Father, that our hearts and minds attentive, mm -hmm. O oh God, so that we can be proactive in pursuing yeah. your purpose and will for our life. Yeah. God, we do say thank you this morning, and know, O oh Father, that we are indebted to you, but God giving you thanks for all that you are about to do. Yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 As you take your seats, I want to deal with the subject this morning, learning how to grow through. Learning how to grow through. I will choose a quick subtopic. It would be I'm dedicated to the cause. Every situation in life is designed to push us into finding ways to overcome obstacles. Naturally, we sometimes find ourselves wanting a reprieve or wanting to take a break, not realizing that God has placed specific tools in us that thrive from us enduring difficult times. It's not so much the test that we should be giving attention to, but it is the anticipated outcome that should be our focus. Might I suggest to you this morning that your ability to grow through a situation is contingent on your decision to go through that situation. God never told you that it would be easy, but it has been declared through song that trouble won't last always. David declared in Psalms 30 and 5 that the anger of God lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts. 
last a lifetime. Goes on to say, weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. I'm also reminded in 1 John 5 and 4 that every God begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. And I'm asking you, have you asked God lately, Lord, what would you have me to learn during this situation that I'm going through? Right. Have you taken the time out to take advantage of the grace that has been afforded to you for every trial that you face? For it was the Apostle Paul who said it clearly in Romans 12 and 3 to be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measuring yourself by the faith that God has given you. Might I submit to you again that your faith is what props up the grace of God to be evident in your life. It is by the grace of God that we are all saved and it is by our faith that salvation is received. And it is through that salvation where we become God's masterpiece, predestined before time to walk in the things that he has planned for each of us. But we must learn to get better through what we go through. I came to tell you this morning, things don't quite go right at the office, but so what? we got to go through it. Time has gotten away from you and you feel like your best years are behind you. The devil is a lie. You need to go through it. The Bible says your ladder shall be greater than your former. Your money ain't stretching as far as it used to. Hang in there. You've got to grow through it. The current state of our country has you disappointed. And you're wondering whether things are going to get better. You better stand on the promises of God and grow through it. Came to tell you God did not bring us this far for us to not learn something along the way. Our growth is locked up in our ability to endure. Uh -huh. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. But he said time happens to us all. We must understand that we have to do the best that we can while we can with what we got. And if I'm ever going to learn from anything that I go through, I've got to understand that it is my responsibility to do what's necessary to see the silver lining out of anything that I go through. I can't expect anybody else to endure my cross, but I understand that it is my responsibility to make sure that if God had brought me to it, surely he would not leave me where I am. I, I came to declare to you this morning that if God is the one that says you are going forward through your situation, God is going to be the one walking you through it, taking you through it, ensuring that you are going to make it out there on the other side. I don't know about you, but I ain't never met God failing in a situation. I don't know what everybody goes through, but I know in the midst of what I go through, God has always been right there to see me through it. I'm reminded of mothers in the church who used to say, baby, if you hold on just a little while longer, hell is on the way. You have got to understand that everything that we go through, it is going to be because of our dedication to it that we are going to be able to endure everything that comes our way. I, I understand that, yes, I am designed or I am destined to go through. I realize that God has purposed me to walk through what I'm walking through. But I also understand that God has given me everything I need to make it. God is the one who makes sure that every situation that I go through, that he gets the glory out of it. And if I understand that everything that I've ever gone through in life and that I'm ever going to go through in life, if I take it upon myself just to understand it, that it is for the glory of God, then it might not get easier, but things do seem to get a little bit better. Because I understand that if God is going to get the glory out of what I'm going through, Surely God is going to see me through my situation. God is not like man who said that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So that tells me God is not like man that he's going to run at the first time of trouble. Oh, 
or than where you're at. So, so I realized that at the end of the day, I have to learn something. I, I understand that God did not purpose it for me to go through what I go through just for me to say that I went through it. I understand that God uh, purposes it that uh, whatever I go through in life, I am designed or there is something in me that designs me or that has made me a certain way that, that if God brought me out of it, there's something in me that wants to speak to the power of God working in me. Not only does it speak to the power of God that works in me, but it causes me to want to relay that information to somebody else. I, Understand that anything that I endure is my responsibility to make sure that the people of God, the men, the women of God, understand exactly what God is doing in my life. Why? Because I realize that, that there is somebody else that may be going through something too, but may not have the same hope that I have. That's why I'm reminded that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. See, we have to understand that at the end of the day, Yes, you go through what you go through, but if you don't learn anything, you ain't good for nobody. You gotta understand that every time you take a step towards what God is taking you, God is destined to get that news come out on the other side to help somebody else. God did not bring you to your situation so that you can just go run and be mad and be upset about what you're dealing with, but God brought you through it so that you can tell somebody else. God brought you through it. Paul was saying, I find time to 
in my situation. So, so Paul's comfort gave him confidence to speak. So if he had not never gone through anything, then he would have never found his voice. I'm telling you, Paul's comfort was a liking to his rejoicing, but Paul's voice was a liking to joy. So anytime that Paul found comfort in what he was going through, he also found joy because he spoke on it. You, you gotta understand, just walk with me for just a moment. Many of us go through things in life and we shut down or withdraw from the situation, but I came to declare to you that your power is in your joy. I came to speak to you this morning to let you know that your comfort is in your rejoicing, but your voice brings about your joy. If, if you can be grateful about it, then you can be thankful while going through it. So Paul found comfort in Philippians, even though he was going through specific situations, Paul still said within himself, God, I am grateful for you bringing me out of the situation. So God, because of my gratefulness, I will reward you with my thoughtfulness or my thankfulness. Paul was glad that someone else was benefiting from the grace of God. So he used that as an opportunity to give God glory for what he was going through. Paul's decision to rejoice on behalf of others is what allowed for the spread of the gospel. Right. Paul understood that if he was going to grow, he was going to have to facilitate the breakthrough for somebody else. He learned early on that growth was a process that was better served when they encountered it together. And I know that we are celebrating our men on this morning, and I understand that with men, when we like to get together, many of us like to go through a lot of things together. And just like the Apostle Paul, I can imagine it works the same way at Smith Chapel, that we have a unity of brothers that are able to identify with one another and understand just what it is to go through a situation. Now, women, we're not discounting you because thank God for you, but this is their day, so I just want to speak that there are some things that men go through that we just can't share with women. There are some things that men go through that sometimes is better left among the group of men. Because we understand that at the end of the day, we don't want to seem to be too vulnerable in front of other people. But we understand that if there is a group of people that go through the same thing that we go through, we can identify and share our plight, and they will understand exactly what we're dealing with. Just like that, we're talking about the Apostle Paul and Philippi. He's thanking God for everything that has gone on. He's thanking God for the good times. He's thanking God for the bad times. But he's writing a specific letter to the brethren, thanking them, saying, look, these are words that are specifically just for you. Uh -huh. I can't give all this information to everybody because everybody just won't understand. But he said, if I can have one or two, three or four believers, Christians, that can identify with what I go through, then I can share what God is about to do. So we understand, just like the Apostle Paul, and just like what's going on through the early church, we find out that there is a group of individuals, those who have come together for a common cause, wanting uh -huh, to, to, to spread the gospel, wanting to spread the word of God, because they understand it's needed. They, they already have realized that beginning anyway, that the word before Paul was even converted, they already know who Paul was and what Paul was like. So now, for some, it's just about seeing the change that God has brought about in the life of this individual who they knew to be a persecutor, who they knew to be a cheater, who they knew to be a thief, who they knew to be someone that would execute and kill those who allow the name of the Lord to come across their tongue. But Paul says, God, I find comfort in what I'm going through because I realize, God, that I may have done something along the way that was not pleasing God. And because I did things along the way, God, I realized that, you know what, there are just some things that I'm going to have to go through to ensure that everything is going to work, God, for your purpose and for your good. And so we have to understand that in life there are going to be many moments, many times where you might feel like you're paying for something that you did a long time ago. But I came to declare to you the same way that God not Paul off the horse and told Paul, Paul, just stop persecuting me and everything is going to be all right. It's the same God that says, I am extending to you grace this morning. And because of that grace, salvation is to you. And whatever you've done before does not matter. But God is saying, I just need you to learn. 
learn something. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Just need to learn something. There was no need for the Apostle Paul to make it by himself. Apostle Paul understood that if I get to the end of the road and I am left all alone, what purpose does it serve me? Uh, I have nobody to declare the works of the Lord to. I can imagine if Prophet Paul is saying, if I am the only one who make it in or who make it to the end, what good is it going to do if I have no one to rejoice with, no one to be happy with, no one to politic with, to understand what I've gone through and then for me to hear what God has delivered them from. The Apostle Paul understood that in order for him to learn through or grow from what he was going and what he was enduring, he had to not only dedicate himself to Christ, but he had to make sure that he picked up some others along the way. Me and now we can relate to this on this morning because I don't know no brother in here that, that wouldn't take it upon himself if you saw a young man doing something, we'll take it, for example, we'll say in the church, I'm sure that anytime the brothers come out here and maybe do anything inside the church, the young men come to and I can imagine that likely every brother in here, every man in here takes those young men under their wing and shows them different types of things and how to do different things and how to do this and how to do that. The Apostle Paul was the same way because he understood at the end of the day he was not going to be here forever. Paul could not allow Christianity to die with him. Paul could not allow the price that God paid to die with him. Paul could not allow what he endured to die with him. Paul needed somebody else to tell the story. So Paul did naturally what you would do. Paul took others along the side and he brought them through. And he showed them what it was like to know what it is to go through what God is taking us through. So as Paul is dealing with everything that is going on in this book, Philippians, in this first particular chapter, we understand that uh, his ultimate goal was to bring somebody else with him. His ultimate goal was if I'm going to ever learn anything, if I'm ever going to grow the way that I need to grow, i got to have somebody else that speaks on my behalf. Paul understood that he could toot his own horn, but if you ain't got nobody else to vouch for you, sooner or later that sound is going to die with you. Paul understood at the end of the day, not only was he dedicated to God, but he was dedicated to everybody that was around him because he understood through that dedication that God was going to live on. All right. Amen. There was no need for the Apostle Paul to make it by himself. His goal was to bring somebody else with him. And his confidence was in knowing what God had presently done for him while in anticipation of what God was about to do for him. Amen. Paul knew that if God started, then he would surely finish it. Amen. Paul equated the good work as individuals growing in Christ, increasing to become the church through the work of grace that becomes impenetrable by the enemy. Paul understood that if he allows growth to take place and allowing that growth to take place, that he brings somebody else with him, Paul understood that the institution that we know today as a church would survive. Because of course, Paul realized it and understood that, that if that those that were gathered around and those that called themselves the church, if the true power of God was resonating through their lives, then he knew that whatever happened, nothing was going to stop them from fulfilling their purpose. Apostle right. Paul understood and knew it just like it was said in the early scripture. That when, 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 when Jesus spoke to Peter and he asked Peter, who do God say that I am or who do you say that I am? And upon the revelation where Peter said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God, upon that revelation when Jesus said, I will build my church upon that revelation where the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It was then the apostle Paul that understood that he has to continually promote the church in order for the enemy to still not be able to do what he was planning to do. Apostle Paul understood it that if I bring forward, if I grow through this and allow others to come with me, he understood it that at the end of the day, no matter how hard it gets, the enemy still will not be able to do away with the church. I know that sounds a little crazy right now for some of us the task seems a little bit daunting because it seems as if every time we turn around, every bill that's being passed, every law that's being 
It acted everything that's being done. It seems like it going, it is going against the church. But what we have to do is we have to be reminded that we have to be just like the Apostle Paul. Even though the world may deal with what they're dealing with, we have to understand that at the end of the day, if we're not growing like we are supposed to, we'll never be able to stand in the place of where we need to be so that those who don't know who Christ is will never see what God has to offer. I believe that many of them or many of the souls that are out in this world are wayward souls and they're just going along with whatever they can go along with because that is just the topic of the day. That is just the way things are supposed to go. That is just status quo, if you will. But we have to understand that if we are ever going to fully be the church and not allow the enemy to penetrate our walls, we're going to have to be like the Apostle Paul and stand for what we believe in. Paul said, I know you think you might have me bound right now. He told him, I know it seems like I can't physically see you. You're reading my letters. I know I've been trying to get to you and I can't quite come back right now. But the Apostle Paul said, I need you to be reminded of what I told you. I need you to understand that at the end of the day, it is your love for me and your love for Christ that will stay. We have to understand that as long as we continue to love God, that everything will work itself out. Right. So the Apostle Paul equated that good work in chapters in verse 6 as individuals growing in Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, God who has begun the good work in you is, is able to complete it. Uh, he says, God that has formulated or has formed us together or has brought us together for this common cause and has already established who we are is the same God that will perfect us. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, said, uh, me learning to grow through it is what proves that the work of God is being perfected in him. Paul understood that if he can learn anything, if he can learn from the situations that he go through, then it is a part of the process of God perfecting. We understand that the same God who started it is the same God who has to finish it. Amen. Paul understood that at the end of the day, if anything is ever going to regulate itself or work itself out the way that it needs to, Paul says you have to stand on the promises that were presented to you when we first met. Paul went to every church and then he would write to them and he would tell them, he says, if you are still going to fulfill the promise that has been laying out, the mandate that has been given to you from the beginning, he said, you have got to learn from what you have been taught and you have got to grow enough in number, uh -huh, not only in mindset, but he said, we've also got to grow in number. The word has got to get out to enough people so that we can have people that agree with us that may not be with you. You've got to understand at the end of the day, we've got people that may not Not 
only do I find uh, faithfulness in everything that God has done, he said, but, but I am rejoicing because I realize that the word that I leave with you has not fallen on deaf ears when you have taken it and you have done exactly what you need to do with it to show forth the glory of God. He tells them we find fellowship in the gospel. He said, it is the ability for us to come together, like-minded individuals, uh, coming together for a common cause that allows us to be able to reproduce and to produce the things that God would have for us so that we can spread God's glory in the earth. And the Apostle Paul knew that we would never be done until Jesus returned. Uh -huh. That's right. The Apostle Paul had told him, has told them the same God that started yeah. this great work. Yeah. He says the same God that has to finish it. That's right. He said, because the one who started it, the one who started it don't finish it, then it's all a lie. He said, but we have to understand that the one who started this thing, the one who started us out on this journey, the one who pulled you out, plucked you out, the one who brought you up out of the mire, the one who, who, who placed you or who, who took you out of the situation you were in is the same God that's going to complete everything that's in you. So that you can be everything that God would have you to be. Also, Paul told him that we are not perfected until Christ comes back. That's right. So he says, it's our duty mm. then to continue to grow. That's, amen. He said, until God, until Jesus returns, we have a responsibility to continue to grow in the enemies of the Lord and, in our, and, and continue to grow in our faith so that no matter what happens, we are where we need to be, who we need to be until Jesus Christ. Paul told him, he said, it is by the grace of God. He said, it's God's grace that has been afforded to me that gives me the faith to believe that my words will find you well. He says, it is the grace of God and my faith to see that my words find you well and in my words finding you well that you will be also grateful the same way that I am that God has delivered you the same way that he has delivered you. He says that I find great joy in the grace of God that my faith not only finds you well, but that you see that I'm doing well because you're reading this letter. But he also says that same grace that caused us to come together when we did come together is the same grace that is still with you right now, even though I am no longer with you. But he says that just because I am no longer with you, the same grace that was extended to you when I was there is the same grace that will go on with you while I am not here. But he says, use that grace to allow you to continue to be the church that God has commanded you to be. Amen. And he said that even though that same grace that is causing you to be the church that God has commanded you to be, even though I am not there, let your faith be strengthened by that same grace, knowing that it is through grace salvation has come, and it is now through your faith that salvation is here. And because salvation is now here, he says, now you can use that to your advantage. He says, because now salvation is here, he said, you now can be grateful and thankful that what you are going through is only but for a moment. Right. Right. He says, you can be grateful and thankful that because not only what you're going through is but for a moment, but he who started it will surely complete it and see yeah. you through yes, he will. to the end. We have to learn to grow through it. There is, there is nothing that we go through in life. Nothing we go through in life is designed for us to just leave it where we find it. But everything that we go through, God has designed it that we pick up something along the way that helps us for the next part of our journey. Amen. If the Apostle Paul had not understood it, that every time he visited the church, or every time that he promoted the church, every time that he grew the church, if he understood uh, that, that what he went through would only last that one time, right? If he did not recognize and know that he would have to endure this time and time again, but he was sure, though, that whatever he went through, God was going to deliver him. If he did not know that God could deliver him, then what reason would Paul have had to go on to the next church? If Paul had not realized or had not taken the tool that he learned from his first experience when he was in prison, when he was shackled, he might have lost his mind and might not have never been able to recover. But the Apostle Paul said, you know what, I've done enough in my life, I've done enough in time that no matter what happens to me from this point on, as long as God gets the glory, I'm going to be all right. Because the Apostle Paul knew at the end of the day the life that he was living 
was not for his own. And it was not for himself. Every one of us in here that have taken it upon ourselves to accept the Lord Jesus Christ in our life must realize and understand that our life is not our own. And every day that we wake up in the morning and take a step out, we are representing who God is in the earth. And I've been representing who God is in the earth. It is our responsibility to do what God would have us to do. Right. Not what we want to do. Right. And I could imagine that if Paul would have had his way with it, he would have never had to go through what he went through. But Paul understood that it was in the suffering that God was going to get the glory out of his life. Come on and stand to you. All right. Amen. He understood that it was out of the suffering. Uh -huh. That God was going to get the glory out of his life. Amen. Amen. I know it's not famous. I know it don't sound good. I know many of us don't want to ever go through nothing. We want to shield our children. We want to shield ourselves from ever having to go through anything. But I'm reminded in scripture where it says to reign with him means to suffer with him. I understand that I'm going to have to go through something. In order for the glory of God to resonate in my life, and so that those who see me or who come after me will know exactly who God is. Men of God, our role in the church is vital. It is so important because we understand that we play the most intricate role in the church because those who come after us look to us to lead the way. They look for us to be dedicated to whatever we put our hands to, and they also look to us to not show any weakness in it, but to be certain that we are headed in the right direction. Paul told them, he said, it is my confidence. My confidence in you, he said, that the grace of God will follow you wherever you go. He said, it is my confidence. Men of God, we understand that it is our confidence in God that paves the way for God's grace to follow after you. Whether it be for your house, whether it be your job, whether it be the ministry, no matter wherever it is that you go, you have to have confidence that the God you serve is great and big enough that anything that comes after you is going to see the power of God being fulfilled in your life. And yes, it might take some suffering, it might take some going through, it might take some hard trial and some hard tribulation, but you have to be confident in that one thing that he who has started a good work in you is able to complete it. He's able to perfect it. He's able to make it whole. He's able to make it the way that he intended for it to be. Not the way that we want it to be but the way that he intended it to be. And that only happens through rejoicing, through joy. That only happens through finding comfort in your voice, knowing that whatever you go through, I'm thankful. Whatever I endure, I'm grateful. Wherever I end up, to God be the glory. Because at the end of the day, it is knowing that that you will be able to proclaim the works of the good Lord. Let's bow our heads in this place. Most precious and heavenly Father, we do thank you. God, we take this time right now, oh Father, understanding that it is you, oh God, that has given us to God the ability to be who we are. God, we're thanking you, oh God, for your grace, for your mercy. God, that has so graciously been extended to each and every one of us. And God, we're grateful because we know that it is nothing that we deserve. We know it's nothing that we could have worked for. We know, God, that it's nothing that we could have paid for. But God, because you sent your precious son, Jesus, God, we have all been extended this grace. And God, it is because of that grace that now we have salvation in front of us. Dear God, that brings us or that makes us, dear God, to be a part of your kingdom. God, it's because of that salvation, oh God, that we are able to turn our hearts to you. Oh God, in thanks and in believing and knowing, dear God, that you died on the cross for us so that we might have a right to eternal life. God, we're grateful and we're thankful, God, because we understand that it is that same grace. God, that has been extended to us in every situation that we go through. God, you're going to be right there. 
right beside us. God, bringing us through situations. God, everybody in the sound of my voice, Father, I speak right now, God, that you bring your blessing, that you strengthen us, oh God. God, give us strength, oh God, to endure trial and tribulation. Give us strength, God, to endure anything, dear God, that comes our way, knowing, dear God, that our confidence is in knowing that you will perfect us. You will make us exactly who you purposed us to be. God, all these things we ask right now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on and clap your hands. Amen. Amen. That, that 
and he reckoned that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed to us in Christ Jesus. So no matter what we go through, we ought to go through it with joy, knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Barnes, to all the men. Amen. Thank you, brothers, for showing up today. Thank you, brothers, for being a part of the program on today. Amen. We thank God for all the men of this ministry. You are important. You are needed. And I want the men to hear this. I want the men to say this, the men of Smith Chapel, I want you to say this. I want you to repeat this after me. Are y'all ready, men? I want you to say, my presence is needed. My presence is necessary. My presence is noticed. That's just how important you are, men. You, that's how important you are. When you're not here, we notice it. And when you are here, we notice it. It's a blessing to have men in the house of God. Brother Jerome, it's good to have you, son, in the house of God. Amen. Hey, you're a young man. You're a strong young man. And I want you to understand, brother, the Bible says, remember that I'm like greater in the days of like you. While you're young, let God get the glory out of your life. You may go through, you will go through some things. But while you're going through, may God get the glory. Amen? Amen. God bless you again. Thank you, everyone. We want to make sure no one leaves today. That no one leaves today and say, you know what? Man, that was an awesome word. And I wanted it to, I wanted to be saved. But, but, but Pastor Clara didn't invite me. I want to make sure I want to close the deal. He offered the deal. We want to close the deal. If there's anyone here that's not saved, if you're here, you're not saved, and you won't be saved, would you raise your hand? If you're here and you're not saved, and you want to be saved, would you raise your hand? No, no one has raised their hand, so we pray and believe that everyone here is saved. We pray that. We pray that. We pray that everyone here is saved. Maybe there's someone here today who, who doesn't have a place to call home. If you don't have a place to call home, and you believe the Holy Spirit has led you here, if you believe that, raise your hand. If you believe that, raise your hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Church family, please don't forget the National Convention that's coming up. We need brothers to sing on uh, that Wednesday. We need sisters to sing on that Tuesday. So if you're able to be a part of the National Convention in Greenville, please let's go and support it. Smith Chapel, thank you for last evening. Brother, uh, Pastor Chris, they treated my wife and I, our family, like we were King's children. I mean, they treated us really good, man. They had a banquet and, and blessed us tremendously. So, Spirit Chapel, we love you dearly. Thank you so much for the love that you showed to me and to our family. Amen. God bless you. Amen. The uh, men have, there's been food prepared for you uh, today. It's, uh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's going to be something to strengthen you along the way. Amen. So we're going to ask everyone to please stand. We're going to uh, bless the food and prepare to give the, the benediction. Father, we thank you for the food that's been received and prepared for our well-being. We ask you to bless it according to your will and your purpose. Father, we ask you a blessing upon the man of God that would share and pour it out on his own today. Father, we pray your hand would continue to be upon his life. Keep him, Lord, that he might be kept. Bless him, Lord, and he shall be blessed. Do it for your name's sake. Father, we ask you to bless the offering that's going to be received. Bless it, Lord, according to your will and your purpose. Bless us as we leave this place. Continue to look on Sister Cole and strengthen her body even now. Father, we give your name the honor, your name the praise, and the glory. Keep your hand on every man's life as part of this ministry. And Father, we thank you and we praise you. And now, by the grace of God, as we communion of the Holy Spirit, rest will abide with all hands forth now and forevermore. And we say amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you.